After all those eons, what does it mean to be us? This project's been in the work for a really long time, right? Yes, I, I heard over 40 years. Yes, that right? Terry started it way back when, and wow. whenever uh, certain opportunities presented themselves, a, a volcano, an eclipse, or something, he would shoot it. And then Nick and I got involved with it when we met Terry over 10 years ago, maybe 10 or 12 or 14 perhaps, and have been working on it since. <music> We were very excited when IMAX got involved and um, the idea that we would have a version that would play in the IMAX theaters on the big screen and the loud sound and everything else, it kind of is sort of chest shattering in a really good way. They tend to be focused more toward um, an educational audience and so we really wanted to make a version that would speak to students, young people, and give them a little kind of grounding in what they're seeing. And again, that version is narrated by Brad Pitt, who loves science and was really excited about that. The universe. Billions of years in the making. The other version, which is narrated by Kate Blanchett, is kind of allowed Terry to go in a more philosophical and questioning direction. And so uh, it was a little more time to explore, more themes to explore. I highly recommend both. A journey from the birth of the stars through the origin of humanity. People will notice, have, having seen his films from his very first up until Voyage of Time, nature has always been a very central character in all of his films. And for Vo in Voyage of Time, it's the first time where he's really been able to focus on that character's story and that incomparable story and being able to go back from its origins all the way through the present and then what science tells us about our future. So I think it evokes a lot of what we've seen from Terry's fascination with nature, but it's the first time we really see him be able to put it front and center. If you do projects which involve natural history, which involve wildlife and, and nature in general, it's almost impossible for the director to be everywhere because sometimes you send out a crew to the middle of nowhere and they come back in three months, in four months time. You talk to them beforehand and you tell them what you want to achieve and then they do that. And there's specialized crews. There's people who would film the same pack of wolves over 15 years. We were fortunate to work with one of the best visual effects supervisors in the world, Dan Glass, who was able to essentially recreate the process of visual effects to be conducive to Terry's style of creating, where unlike traditional VFX where you premeditate every frame and it doesn't really leave that much room for experiential filmmaking, uh, with the, in this case, Dan was, be able to, was able to create a framework where Terry was able to react and interact with visual effects the same way that he does with actors. In the case of the, the science aspect of it, every single frame of this film was advised by some of the most eminent scientists in the world. So that was another challenge to make sure that we never were taking too many liberties artistically, but to root it in science. But again, that also created something now that in the feature version, even though it is more poetic, and then obviously in the Brad Pitt IMAX version, Every image you, you see is informed by the most up-to-date science based on the best scientists of the world.